Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Hello, my name's Mary. And I'm Abby. And today we're here with another episode of Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. So this week is a little bit different because me and Abby are both on the interviewing team. Um, so, but yeah, we just thought we'd introduce ourselves for those of you who haven't watched the Meet the Team episode. So I'm Mary. I've just finished my second year in biochemistry at Somerville College. And I'm Abby. I've just finished my first year of earth sciences at St. Peter's College. And we're sisters. So if we get abusive to each other, that's why. <laughs> that's why, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Um, okay. So yeah, um, welcome to the podcast. Today we'll be talking about the differences um, that we've experienced between uh, medical sciences and like physical sciences. So Abby studies earth sciences and I study biochemistry, as we've already said. So we're just going to be talking about like the differences that we experience in our life with these two different subjects. Um, and I think we should start off just giving like a general day in the life to just give you an idea of what our day to day lives look like and how they differ. And um, so I don't know if you want to start, Abby. So basically, for a first year scientist, it can be the, day, the days are normally quite busy. So you normally expect you to get to the department by, so you go to the science department, it's very departmental, earth sciences. But um, so you normally have two, three lectures in the morning. Um, and then you have lunch around uh, at one and that's for an hour. And then normally in the afternoons, we'll have like a two or a three hour practical. I know some scientists call them labs, but um, we call them practicals. And, and that can comprise, you know, looking at fossils and um, drawing out maps and um, looking at rocks, <laughs> our favorite. <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, so it's pretty much, yeah, quite a lot of contact hours, I'd say, for an earth scientist's day. Um, but yeah, it's fun. We love it. <laughs> Cool. So, like, what sort of lectures do you have? Um, how are lectures presented? Lectures are presented in normally one of two areas of the department. So you either, you're either presented lectures in the seminar rooms, um, where it's basically like a small seminar room, because um, each earth science cohort for each year is around 30 to, 40, 30 to 40 students. So it's quite a small seminar room. Or you get taught in the laboratories. Um, so it's, and that, I suppose that gives a quite a different feel. You normally have the practicals in the laboratories as well. Um, so it's quite fun. It's, it mixes it up and it changes the dynamic of the group quite well. Yeah, what about you, Matt? Yeah. Oh yeah. I was going to say you're quite a small cohort. So I suppose you can just have lectures in a seminar room and it's yeah, get yeah. everyone in. Um, yeah. So my day looks kind of a little bit different. We have less contact hours than, um, earth sciences. We'll normally have lectures maybe nine till 11 or nine till 12 um and there's about 100 biochemists in my year so we're normally in like quite a sizable lecture theatre um for those and then yeah I mean it sort of depends on the day because like I'll go back to college for lunch probably um or we just sit in my friend's room just chatting for hours um when I'm meant to be doing my work but no on days I do do my work I probably like on a normal day today I'll probably just go back to my room and like write an essay or whatever um write up some lecture notes but if we have a tutorial obviously i'll prepare for that i like to read through my tutorial work before i go to my tutorial so i'm prepared and we tend to have that have them once or twice a week um or we may have labs so in first year we had them weekly on a friday um and they were like 11 to 5 but they never lasted that long um they were i mean they could do if you like you know like i don't know <laughs> took forever to do the lab but um, yeah, you're normally out there in like three hours. And then now, because I'm in second year, well, during second year, um, they were over three days um, or five days and they were like much longer labs. And there was also a lot more of us like designing our own experiments within the practical. So it was, um, yeah, it was really good. It was, yeah, they're quite good fun, um, but more definitely more intense for second year. Um, yeah, but really compared to you, like the conduct hours do seem different. Like we would never be in department um, well, we don't actually even have lectures in our actual sci um, biochemistry department, but like we wouldn't have lectures for longer than like two hours or three hours a day. Um, so you mentioned uh, you had tutorials. Um, I just wanted to say that in, well, obviously I've only been in Oxford for a year now, um, but for normally first year scientists, we have around two tutorials a week. Um, so you always have a maths tutorial. Well, 
well for us anyway we had one mass tutorial a week um and we had one sort of departmental tutorial so you'd kind of switch between each of the different sort of lecturers in the department so a volcanologist would teach you volcanoes <laughs> Yeah. What about your personal tutor? Did you not have any tutorials organised by your actual college? Um, so, yeah. Um, so normally we'd have like one or two at the beginning of term. Um, but then after that, it would go to sort of standardised tutorials where every single first year would do, would basically cover the same tutorials. Um, so everyone would have the same information. Because I think they were, they were slightly worried about the lack of information that students were getting. Because, like, for example, my tutor was focused on sedimentology, so all I'd know was about sediments, whereas other people's tutors were miner mineralogists, so they would know a lot about minerals, which would put them at advantage for the mineralogy exams and stuff. So I think they just wanted a, a good mix for the students. Yeah. Yeah, see, that differs from biochemistry. So in first year, I suppose we had tutes, and our tutorials were organised by a college and by our like, college tutors. Um, and then we had like classes of about 10 in one or two topics that was um, <laughs> that was um, organised by the department, but with like another college. But in second year, it's literally all just college organised tutes. Like we don't have anything organised by the department really, apart from labs and lectures. So, yeah, it's quite interesting that earth sciences is quite departmentally based. And I think that's also represented in the fact that for biochemistry, we... Um, interviewed at different colleges so I interviewed at Somerville and then interviewed at Exeter whereas for both your interviews you interviewed down in the earth science department rather than at a college right so would you say that earth science is known to like to be have like quite centralized departmental teaching in nearly all aspects pretty much yeah um so I know that whenever we have collections so collections are basically basically like small like low-key tests that you have at the beginning of term um, so when you go back after Michaelmas and Hillary normally, um, and yeah, these the, so yeah, these are normally like organised by the college, and you, you'll contact the college to get information on them. But every time I look at the list to see the information from my college about earth sciences, it's always like, oh, check the earth science department. So like everything is really centralised in the department. Like it's colleges, it's quite well it's basically a separate entity to the earth science department which is quite different to lots of other subjects in oxford where you're very much centered in the college with a, a little bit of input from your own department so i think I, I quite like that because it sort of separates the two places where i go in oxford yeah i think i think that's fair and i but like i think it is important to know there is that distinction between like well in our case it's biochemistry and earth science but i think yeah like you said that most sciences are still quite college organised. Maybe it's because of the smaller size of earth sciences or sort of makes it that way, but you know. yeah, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I suppose because of our, like I, I'm more of a medical scientist and you're more of a um, physical scientist, that the A-levels that we need differ. Um, so for example, like I had to have chemistry to do biochemistry and obviously um, biology is like highly recommended and so is maths I think. Maths is also highly recommended but it's kind of different for you right? Um, yes yeah, so every earth scientist has to have maths A level um, and I think um, I'm not 100% not sure but I think that's, about pre that's pretty much a certainty for all MPLS sciences so for all um, mathematical physical and life sciences um, you need maths um, ch definitely check the prospectuses and stuff though just to clarify that all up um, but and they said that also for earth sciences it was highly recommended to have chemistry and biology no chemistry <laughs> chemistry and <laughs> physics and then biology geography geology further maths these were all like other additional ones which would be really good to help you with your application but it varies it completely varies but basically maths is very important for the physical sciences this is just reminding me of when abby found out but obviously she found out she got into oxford and then <laughs> she got an email from the college saying that she was part of like the physical sciences division <laughs> and she came up to me and my mum and she was like guess what guys i'm a physical scientist and like <laughs> It sounds like we're over exaggerating, you know, with the hair flick, but she literally did that. She was so like full of herself that she was a physical scientist. 
I was joking. <laughs> Honestly, me and my mum took the mic so much. Like, I'm a physical scientist. <laughs> wow. It was so funny. <laughs> no, but um, yeah. Uh, me and Abby have constant arguments over like whose subject is more useful because I'm like oh yeah well biochemistry you know there's lots of like um like gene therapy and and immunology and really important things like saving people's lives cancer research um everything like that and I'm like so yeah it's the most important and then I'm like actually no mine's the most important because there's no point curing cancer and curing Alzheimer's without the earth so climate research is more important (laughs) Yeah, we do have ongoing fights about whose subjects are more important. Um, but anyway, <laughs> off that, um, now I'm abused, Abby. Um, there's more abuse to come, but for now, I thought I'll do. Um, yeah, I think also, like, um, we were talking before about how much the different sciences are used. So I don't know if you want to talk about, like, how much use you get of the individual sciences within um, earth science, because I think it's really important to note that the science degrees are Oxford are really multidisciplinary so you may apply for like straight chemistry or straight physics but you're definitely going to get hints of biology and chemistry and maths and other stuff thrown in there so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about that with earth science um yeah definitely so the beauty about earth sciences is it's basically it's split down basically into geophysics geochemistry and then paleobiology um or geobiology um so and but there's a lot of focus i'd say especially in michaelmas term on geophysics and so with like your seismology you've got all your physical um like the the physics side of it so like newton's laws and all that you know (laughs) um and it's really quite mathsy as well so it's really really heavily maths based as well the um degree um but then that being said um chemistry is also very dominant in in earth sciences as well um, so and, and biology is also quite important in terms of like fossils and stuff but I'd say that's more like um, it's less as important do you know what I mean like it's not as important um, that being said though we did a whole lecture series on cell and molecular biology so like we learn about eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells and all that <laughs> stuff <laughs> that's mine I remember she came in and she was shouting at me because she was like why are you doing my subject <laughs> in earth sciences <laughs> <laughs> she just shows off all the time and she like tries to encroach on my knowledge I'm like Abby please just let me have a little bit of <laughs> intelligence to myself she came down before I was doing a lecture on um eukaryotic DNA replication and Abby comes down and she's like yeah I know that you yeah, know Okazaki fragments and I was like honestly this girl there's nothing she doesn't know <laughs> it's so annoying <laughs> um yeah do you want to care if you, is that everything you want to say about that or is there more I just cut you off sorry um, no, no, no. I mean, I suppose also there's a thing to know is that I know a lot of physical sciences will do some form of coding as well. This is, don't worry, this is not a prior knowledge. Oh my God, I literally did not have any prior knowledge of coding. Um, I'm still working on it. But yeah, um, you do also learn to do a bit of coding. It's normally on MATLAB. Um, but I know you do coding as well, Maz, don't you? So do you want to like, do you want to talk about this sort of distribution of the sciences you do and like what type of coding you do yeah so we really don't do that much coding well we haven't so far we've done a little bit of um like r coding um for statistics and then a little bit of matlab to look at like genomics yeah um so yeah um so yeah but oh, honestly it that will never be for me ever that will never be my area of expertise um but yeah i mean i went into biochemistry thinking oh like it's going to be biology and chemistry um and yeah it definitely is biology and chemistry but there's also so much more to it there's physics was like an insanely huge part of it um in first year so we had a biophysical chemistry module and um we sat down for our first ever lecture in that module and boom quantum mechanics and i was like what why a biochemist studying quantum mechanics but as you learn it more and more you realize like how integral it is to the understanding of what things at the molecular and cellular level which is what we study in biochemistry so yeah there is a lot of overlap and we also have like a maths and statistics module maths is obviously so so important um data analysis is an insanely huge part of biochemistry um and we even have a paper at the end of our like in our finals like there's a whole data analysis paper um 
yeah and I think another thing to know is that in first year we we do like our exams are prelims which are our exams that we take at the end of first year that don't count towards our degree but my prelims were a mix of so there was an essay paper and then the rest of the papers were sort of problem sheety so they were like short questions and with problems that you had to answer and things whereas in for my finals five out of how many papers do I do yeah five out of my six papers I think I do yeah I definitely do five six papers in total so five of my papers are um essay papers like all essays and then one paper is that data handling um thing data handling paper um, I was just wondering how that differed for you and if you maintain that level of like problem solving um sort of problem sheet-esque questions in your future years after first year um yeah so I think we're quite similar to biochemistry in terms of our exams so obviously um my exams were cancelled for prelims because of the coronavirus <laughs> um but that being said, I think we have, so we have one straight maths paper, two sort of geology related papers, one planet earthy paper, and then one physics, chemistry and biology paper. So there, like you. Um, and I think they're predominantly essay based. Um, so obviously the maths paper is mathy. And then the physics is going to, and physics and chemistry will have maths in them as well. But like you said, it's, it's, it's sort of, well, I'd say it's sort of half and half between maths. Yeah, half and half between maths and um, essay based for our exams. Um, and also there's a practical, the, one of the geology ones is a practical one. Um, so that's all about, um, so drawing a map. Um, I think you have to look at hand samples and basically, you know, describe the hand samples that you've got. You have to look at rock. Um, samples under the microscope and describe the sort of the optical properties of the rocks that you have um, so I think I don't know do you, you do, do you have like a practical exam in your in your in first year or second year no but we get graded on all of our practicals we do throughout the year so for first year we had to get like a sit we're graded like s plus s s minus i don't know what else there is i've never got s's and s pluses <laughs> i'm not sure what else there is um but basically yeah um you have to pass your labs to be able to pass first year and then also it's the same again you get graded on all your labs and you need to get over either over 50 percent or over 75 percent can't remember to um pass that section of your degree and you need that to pass your degree obviously um so yeah more than one one set practical exam it's just like over the uh, over the period of the year or two years so yeah i suppose there's less pressure in that way but i suppose you're always contributing to that from lab to lab which is quite interesting. But I think also a huge difference between biochemistry and earth sciences. And I say it's the only upside to earth sciences. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm sure it's great, Abby. Um, but um, you guys do lots of field trips. And I was wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit more about that, because that's super interesting, because I don't think or hardly any of the other sciences, if any, will do field trips like you guys do. So yeah, take it away. Why, thank you. <laughs> this is like literally one of the upsides of my degree. So for earth sciences in first year, you go to uh, Pembrokeshire, literally, literally as soon as Freshers' Week finishes. Um, and then that's so that's really cool. So they sort of introduce you to um, how to see rocks in the field. Um, you know, you're basically normally you're looking for like things like fossils or um, specific types of rocks, um, you know, and then you sort of start evaluating. OK, so, you know, why is that rock like that? You know, is it metamorphic? Is it igneous? And then you're like, OK, so what does this tell us about the past environment here? And it's quite cool because what was really cool was that one whole environment along one beach in Pembrokeshire. Um, basically told us about the whole history of this, the closure of this big ocean. So it's. A lot of these field trips that we go on um, with the sciences are really useful in sort of understanding the geological history of our planet, you know, um, and it does get better. The field trips do get better um, as you get, as you progress through your degree. So I know second year, oh yeah, first year you also go to Aaron. Second year, um, they normally go to uh, Dorset and Ascent. 
third year you go to Spain and then fourth year you can pick between Bermuda or uh, Santorini. So some really cool places to go to. Um, I'm so excited for all this to happen. Um, but yeah, so it's basically just looking at rocks, fossils, having a good time. Um, I remember we swam in the sea at like 10 at night. Like that was really cool. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that's really cool because I feel like um, biochemistry is you can go on a trip to a lab or a lab. So have fun. No, I'm joking. There is a lot of options of biochemistry, but I guess that like, undergraduate level you, there aren't any field trips linked into the course but actually Abby I have been on a field trip is it called a field trip I don't know it was definitely like a school trip and basically one of my tutors works in Diamond um which is I think it's called a Harwell Science Campus or something um so it's there and it's just out of Oxford it's about a 40 minute bus ride from the city centre so me and the three of the biochemists um in Somerville in my year got the bus um, to Diamond and we got like passes to go in um oh I thought I had the pass with me but it's in my drawer somewhere um and yeah so we got a day in Diamond and basically our tutor took us round Diamond showed us these really cool labs we got like some little demonstrations we saw all the different types of um x-ray crystallography machines and it was actually quite cool I'm not gonna lie it was quite cool um so yeah I suppose <laughs> There aren't field trips per se, but you never know what's around the corner. Um, where are you going to end up? You can end up at Diamond I'm sorry. or Bermuda. I'm sorry. You, you, you've outdone me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Diamond over Bermuda any day, please. <laughs> Who wouldn't want a gig to be in a gigantic synchrotron? It's just the dream. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah so yeah as you can tell me and Abby do have ongoing wars about whose subjects better but that's okay it's you know sister rivalry and if you want some more sister rivalry you can follow us on Instagram at sisters underscore at underscore Oxford yeah do that <laughs> <laughs> great Thanks for <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome um so yeah I mean I guess there's so much more we could talk about and um, we definitely want to do some podcasts talking about our experience with our subjects, um, how it's shaped what we want to do in the future I think would be quite an interesting thing to talk about because I know I don't want to do biochemistry anymore um, as a future career, as in research um, and yeah and I think that it'd just be really imp um, interesting to delve into this a little bit further. Um, but in terms of looking at like biochemistry versus earth science like i think we've covered most of the ground um i think we've clearly displayed how superior earth sciences <laughs> is so i mean bermuda i mean can't go wrong <laughs> to be honest the thought of santorini and bermuda and your lab project abroad which could be in like montana or, or like somewhere cool in america or canada or uh, yeah it it does sound pretty good, but I just, the thought of sitting there playing with rocks for the rest of my degree just makes me want to hit my head against a brick wall. So I think I've picked the right degree. <laughs> yeah, but isn't brick a rock? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> actually, so, yeah. actually though, Loki, we don't just look at rocks. Heads up. We do a lot more than that. So don't diss my degree <laughs> well you can't you can't leave it there you've got to tell them what else you do well we look at the atmosphere in the oceans we look at the planets and the formation of the solar system we look at fossils uh we also look at isotope geochemistry we look at lots of other things all things to do with planet earth <laughs> so there we go it's not just rocks well, you heard it here first, guys. Earth sciences is not just about rocks. So, <laughs> the earth scientists get quite aggressive about that. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we'll end it here today. Um, it's been really great to, um, yeah, tell you a little bit more about our degree subjects. Um, yeah, remember to follow us on Instagram at Oxford from the Inside and check out our Facebook page for regular updates on new content. And also we have a YouTube channel with where we release our um, podcast. Also just type in Oxford from the Inside and Spotify. Just type in Oxford from the Inside again. And you can, if you don't want to see our um, questionable faces, you can just listen to our beautiful voices. So yeah, I hope you're all well and stay safe and we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya.